All right, pause this one. When given a spoon and thick food like ma applesauce, Maisie will be able to feed herself most of the meal without help. A lot of states do this target date sort of thing. And it, it's clear that a lot of people think that by putting a target date in there, it suddenly becomes measurable. This is a measurable outcome, but it is not because of the target date. This would be a measurable outcome without the target date. We know exactly what behavior we're talking about, feeding herself with a spoon. We know under what conditions, when we give her something thick like applesauce or oatmeal or pudding, something thick and chunky that sticks to the spoon, um, not chicken noodle soup. Uh, and we know what the criteria, what the criterion is. It's most of the meal um, and without help. We want her to do it without help. That's also a condition. So most of the meal. And are the parents going to be able to tell us whether she's able to feed herself most of the meal without help? Yes, they'll be able to tell us that. Okay, give this one a pause. Spencer will be able to stack nine one-inch cubes in a coffee mug within two minutes of being presented them. Clearly, this is not a smart outcome, but let's talk about what is smart about it. Is it specific? Absolutely. Is it measurable? Clearly. Attainable? Maybe so. Relevant? Absolutely not. And if it's tied to a priority, we've done a very poor job of presenting our assessment information to families. Okay, go ahead and pause this one. This was one of the best outcomes that I reviewed some years ago when I was doing a research study of IFSPs. This one relates to the traditional outcome of navigating over uneven surfaces, except that it's completely embedded within the context of this child's life. Um, it, better than even embedded. This is making use of something that's not working well for Kendall as a source of a learning opportunity. There are no numbers in this, but it is measurable. It's clearly specific. We're going to be able to tell when it's met. Everybody knows what we're talking about. Clearly related uh, to a routine and probably tied to a priority. All right, what about the so that and in order to statements? A lot of states really focus on making sure that folks say so that and in order to. And the purpose of that is to sort of show that the outcome is relevant, but sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes so that makes a lot of sense to, to be able to show that it's relevant, but sometimes it doesn't make sense. For example, to say that a child will learn to walk so that they can learn to play on the playground or so they can play on the playground really doesn't make a lot of sense. That's not why we want the child to play on the playground. So that doesn't make a lot of sense. Another type of wording that can be helpful, helpful if people get stuck in this sort of predicament is child will participate in X activity by X skill. So the child will participate in outside play on the playground by walking by himself at least 10 steps. That would be a better example and a more accurate example. All right, just how, just in the same way that we needed to think about how to select outcomes before we talked about how to write them, we need to talk about what we want to do before we select our strategies uh, and before we begin to write them. Before we even select a, strategies, a strategy, we should listen to what everybody is already doing. Families and child care providers are doing fantastic things with kids without ever being told to do so by an early interventionist. They're working on all five areas of development. They're, they're doing fantastic things that, that we tell uh, folks to do. But we should listen to what people are already doing and include those strategies as strengths within the IFSP. We should point out to families what they're already using now. Maybe we'll suggest other ways to use those strategies and other routines. We might modify those some. We might suggest how other people might use them, how siblings might use them. 
but we want to listen to what people are doing now before we start select suggesting strategies. Okay, look at this Benjamin Moore ad. If this were a typical ad, it would just be a billboard stuck in a stuck in the grass with a ad for Benjamin Moore and and paint buckets. But instead, look, they've used the sky as a source for their ad. This is the difference between embedding intervention into a routine and using a routine as a source of natural learning opportunity. Here's another one. They've used the surroundings as a source of natural learning opportunity, or it's a metaphor for using the surroundings as a source of natural learning opportunity. They've used the environment as a source for this ad. And here's another one. A t-shirt with a FedEx uh, imprint on the side that looks like the guys carrying the envelope. Again, the embedding version would be to have a FedEx sign across the front of the t-shirt and the using the environment as a source is this example. Okay, this one's very metaphorical and I love this one. This one has taken a crack in the sidewalk which may have been seen as negative or a problem or something to fix and yet it's a perfect source for this ad. And so often we see things in kids. And here's another one. Using, a, using the environment as a source rather than embedding. And here is another one. And again, it's not that inter embedding intervention is negative. It's certainly positive and something we want to do all the time. But before we get to that level of intervention, we want to make sure that we've used the environment and the resources in the environment as a source of learning opportunity first. And then we build on top of that what we need to. The routine acronym can help us with writing our strategies. The R stands for routines based. Is it clear how this strategy either makes use of the routine as a source of learning opportunity or how this strategy will enhance the routine or is embedded or somehow tied to the routine? O is it outcome related? Does the strategy directly relate to the outcome? Not 10 steps removed to the, from the outcome, but directly related to the outcome. For example, it may not be clear how blowing bubbles through a straw is related to, I want my child to use words uh, at mealtime to indicate whether she wants you know, X, Y, or Z. That's 10 steps removed and, and maybe not related at all. So we need to be thinking about, do the strategies match the outcome? The U in routine stands for understandable. Can everyone on the team understand what this means? Part of being understandable is using full sentences rather than phrases or single words to mean strategy. Um, verbal prompting, modeling, books. Those are just things we use with everybody. There's nothing special about that. So we want to be able to use strategies that fit within this child's context. That's why it's an individualized family service plan. Strategies shouldn't look the same across IFSPs. We certainly will have uh, strategies that we draw upon that we use in multiple IFSPs, but they should be individualized. They should have meaning for that particular family. It should be a special strategy that fits within the context to work on a particular outcome. The T in routine stands for trend, transdisciplinary. Does this look like a PT goal or a DI goal or a speech goal or an OT goal? Or does it look like a family goal? A family goal in which everyone on the team has contributed. 